Um, so next up we have Ariana Tikal and um, Mark Crookston. And um, sorry, let me just get your presentation. Uh, Ariana is a research librarian specializing in Māori archival collections in the arrange, arrangement and description team at the Ag Alexander Turnbull Library. Uh, she has a BA in Māori studies, a postgrad diploma in museum studies and a postgrad certificate in information studies. Um, she's worked in the glam sector in Māori specialist roles for more than 20 years and is a singer-songwriter, so I'm expecting to be this to be delivered in Waiata. Um, <laughs> and Mark is Principal Advisor for Government Information Management and um, Use at Archives New Zealand. He has also worked in archives in the Pacific and the UK, and he enjoys contributing to strong information systems that support good governance, people's rights, economic growth, and societal memory. That's me just trying to sound fancy. Tēnā koutou katoa, ko kapu kata mahaka, toku maunga, ko o feo, toku awa, uh, no Otipoti Aho, Ko Mark Crookston, Toko Ingoa, No Reira, Tenakoto, Tenakoto, Tenatato Katoa. Kia ora, Ko Kaitahu, Te Iwi, Ko Katira Kihu, Te Hapu, uh, Ko Auraki, Te Mauka, Ko Waitaki, Te Awa, uh, Tene Te Mihi, uh, Nui Kia Koto Katoa, Tene Ahi Ahi, Kia ora. Um, if we do get through this quickly, I'm sure Ariana will finish on a waiata. <laughs> um, the name differs slightly to uh, what's in the program. We didn't actually have the name of our, of our research project, which we're going to be talking about when, uh, when I put the abstract in. Um, so the name uh, Korero Katia is a reflection on the concept of uh, Kanohi Katia, which means to have a physical presence, or literally, literally that your face is seen. Uh, in its original form, the phrase expresses the importance of meeting people face to face and to be seen and known amongst Māori communities. And the title of this project, we are referring to the kōrero, or expressions of the ancestors which are present in our archival collections, being discovered by the communities that they relate most to through the act of digitization. So uh, we've, uh, we've, we're in the process of a, a research project. Um, uh, and try and understand the impacts of digitization with a case study of Te Reo uh, Māori archival collections. And this is a presentation of some of the initial findings of that. Um, just briefly, um, just on the drivers of it, um, it's important to note that it's a research project funded jointly by Victoria University of Wellington. There's seats up the front, guys, come on. Um, it's jointly funded by um, Victoria University of Wellington and uh, the University of British Columbia in Vancouver through the Interpares Trust project, which is a, a sort of a multinational uh, archival research project to understand trust implications with digital, digital archives. Um, Ariana and I are just two people on the team. Uh, that also includes Paul Diamond, um, curator Māori at the Alexander Turnbull Library and Dr. Gillian Oliver and Dr. Chun Li Lu from um, Victoria, Victoria University. Um, so why, why do we do this project? Um, mainly because um, I, it's time to move beyond access. Um, there's a few kind of key drivers here. Um, I think our access thinking is limited. Um, it focuses too much on transactions between users and institutions, which puts the institution at the centre. It limits our ability to understand what is done with collections. It limits our, ab limits our ability to understand users. And it limits our thinking. I also think we're really terrible at telling our value proposition as a sector. Um, numbers of hits on websites, numbers of items retrieved from, from repositories are easily counted, but I don't think they really count for much. Access is important but it is just a precondition for use, and use is where the value is generated. So we thought we'd uh, 
um, do this research project and as a sort of attempt to help shift the thinking in the sector in New Zealand and provide a practical example of um, how we can shift from measuring outputs and transactions to measuring outcomes. Um, Te Reo Collections were uh, a good case study, um, we thought, as a significant investment in digitization has occurred for um, uh, Te Reo Māori Collections. Um, the stakeholder relationship is an important relationship. Uh, the potential for a compelling impact narrative was high, so we thought we'd check it out. Um, we, uh, as a team, we put together a survey. Um, we sent it around a range of different channels and we asked people to share it with, with, with colleagues. We heard from 83 people. Um, and so this, the purpose of this slide is just to, to note that we heard from people from around the country and we heard from a range of different people doing a range of different work. Um, this is uh, these classifications for occupations is something we brought together. It was a free text field. We asked people just to say what they did. Um, and um, yeah, we, we heard from laborers. Um, so uh, we heard from a wide variety of people. Um, there were 78 responses to this question, but there were 83 responses uh, in general. Um, most of the questions were voluntary. So some of the answers that we got to the question, sometimes there was 70 people answered, sometimes there were 20 people answered. But um, I think what we have done is uh, we've got uh, quite a, a, a broad but narrow view of impact assessment um, and types of use of Te Reo Māori archival collections. And we're just going to go through just three of the key findings that we've come up with. Um, noting that further work will sort of dive a bit deeper into some of these areas and we'll talk about further work later on. Um, okay. Uh, kia ora. just in terms of the demographic, I just wanted to mention as well that, uh, yeah, we're aware that it was, um, yeah, not a huge sample of the community and also it was an online survey, so the type of people who would actually participate in an online survey that um, is also informing our results, just to have that in mind. Um, this is a picture of uh, my daughter and I at our, um, our marae onuku uh, around Akoroa, and this is to illustrate the concept of whanaungatanga, which is a sense of um, togetherness, and um, you can see that especially the kids look really happy to, to be amongst um, their whanau in this shot and um, whanaungatanga was something that came out as a, a quite a strong theme in the results of the uh, kanohi, uh, korero kitea um, research um, and the definition of it in the online Māori dictionary is a relationship, kinship, sense of family connection, a relationship through shared experiences and working together which provides people with a sense of belonging. It develops as a result of kinship rights and obligations which also serve to strengthen each member of the kin group and it extends to others whom one de develops a close familial friendship or reciprocal relationship. So uh, we thought it was really important to, um, to think about this concept for us and institutions and because we're the guardians of a lot of this um, amazing uh, taonga and, and mātauranga. And this is a more boring shot of, um, of the, one of the slides in the report. Um, and this expresses um, you know, the results in terms of um, why people shared and the reasons for um, sharing collections. Um, so 95% of the respondents said that they did share uh, some of these digitized collections that they accessed, uh, which was quite an amazing result really. Um, and it seemed to, um, uncover um, kind of this quite a dynamic um, thing that's going on and um, I think we're really keen to, to know more about this. Um, so we also asked the reasons for behind why they shared. Um, and some of the reasons were whakapapa, uh, learning te reo, use in iwi research and also to expand um, knowledge and language revitalization including iwi dialect research. Um, 
So the, the dark blue line, if you can see that, is uh, the reasons for sharing and then uh, the uses uh, or perceived uses um, for that, the ongoing uses of those shared collections. Um, so yeah, the, the big line, uh, work and educational res research and whakapapa were, were pretty high up there, um, as well as contributing to the community and um, to educate others. Um, yeah, and a big uh, kaupapa within that is uh, a sense of obligation to share, uh, which relates to the concepts of um, whakapapa relationships, um, cultural values, and um, the idea of kaitiakitanga, um, which in order to, to be a kaitiaki of that knowledge, you need to be able to access it, or reconnect with it in, in this case. Um, some of the quotes from the respondents um, relating to whanaungatanga um, is to do with uh, sharing uh, with people who have a right to look at such material as um, being from the appropriate iwi, um, informing others about the availability of the sources as um, they asked them about a particular question and then they felt obliged to, um, to share the information about the, res the, about the sources. Um, and also, yeah, just sharing, sharing because they felt it was appropriate uh, because of those um, whakapapa or whānau connections to the resources. Uh, another question or line of questions uh, related to wairua, which is um, the spirit and um, the wairua associated with the knowledge within um, Te Reo Māori collections. And, um, yeah, it was around about half um, said that they they thought um, yeah 45 percent said no that they didn't think that digitization affected uh, the wairua of the collections and um, and yeah s uh, around about 37 percent said yes and then uh, yeah a smaller percentage said that they weren't sure or it depends on the information the type of information um, Yeah, while there is uh, s some significant uh, recognition of the effects of digitisation on uh, the wairua associated with the collections, respondents acknowledged that the benefits of digitisation and particularly how digitisation uh, can help uh, preserve information for the future um, was something important and I think um, yeah, there was a balance but I think overall um, the results showed that, um, that the benefits outweighed um, the um, the conservative approach of, of not digitising. Um, some of the quotes um, that came out of this uh, line of questioning are related to um, one said, I think digitising can lose some of the wairua you can get from learning the same information from a komatua, uh, but at least online it is available for anyone looking uh, for it um, and for future generations. Uh, also, I think the wairua remains with the original document and um, the reality is that these days whānau Māori are spread all over the world so that relates to the other nature that we've got heaps of, of Māori that are living in Australia and elsewhere and so it's um, not practical for them to always come to, to our institutions so it's um, allowing much better access to, to these collections. Um, another quote was, I feel that there will always be varying levels of wairua experienced depending on the intimacy or otherwise of the user with the material and or the contributor and the medium. So um, in terms of whakapapa relationships again and how close um, that person is um, depends on um, yeah, the wairua attached um, to, to the collections and the relationships. So, yeah. Um, in terms of uh, like trying to understand impact, we um, we did an exercise where we we took the findings and we we sort of drew a line between um, what we were finding and what some sort of macro government outcomes were. The sort of idea here was um, why try and come up with our own Im impacts when government policymakers spend a lot of time in rooms trying to come up with outcomes and we can just um, draw a connection between what we do with digitization and what 
government is trying to achieve to improve society. Um, and so we thought we'd uh, have a go at sort of linking um, digitization to, to some of those strategies. And we thought this would really help us when it came time to um, uh, articulate our value proposition back to Treasury or back to the people who, who provide uh, money for digitization and funding. So we can sort of articulate uh, the value of what we do. So uh, the Māori language strategy, which is in the process of being updated, but this was the current one when we were doing this, it has a range of uh, our, our, our objectives, sorry, one of which is increasing the use of Māori language among whānau Māori and other New Zealanders, especially in the home. 54% um, uh, of users stated their purpose for using uh, digital te reo Māori collections was to gain family knowledge. 95% shared collections with others, as, Arian, as Ariana said, um, and most of that sharing happened with, with family and friends. 67% um, in fact said they like to be able to share their collections with family and friends. One quote was, the convenience of this information has been pivotal to including some whānau in whānau decisions. Um, the Māori language strategy um, objective two is about increasing critical awareness of Māori language revitalisation. 65% of users said they used um, uh, the collections for revitalisation of te reo initiatives so that's pretty core to um, and, and quite a strong contribution of the work we do to digitize this stuff um, and make it accessible and usable. Um, another objective is about increasing the status of the Māori language in New Zealand society. 65% um, of users uh, claim their use of uh, te reo Māori archives uh, digital te reo Māori archives contributed to the understanding of Māori history. 65% also claimed an outcome uh, of their use um, was knowledge passed on to others. Um, yeah. Um, I don't know if you know this, but I work in uh, government, so I do, but not a lot of people do. But um, New Zealand Treasury has a higher living standards um, strategy. So for those of you who aren't from New Zealand, this is uh, the central government sort of purse strings. Um, they have a pillar in their higher living standards called social cohesion, and they state that social cohesion, a social cohesion is a society that actively works for a well-being of all its members, and those members experience positive outcomes. They also state that social cohesion includes um, an experience people have um, uh, where they see evidence of their own identity within public services. So uh, what we found with our research was 49% experienced an outcome of personal enlight enlightenment um, through the public institutions where they, they, they um, gained access and for, for use of the, the collections. 54% experienced an outcome of gaining family knowledge, which I also said, and 25% added the collections that they found to an iwi repository, which is something we have to dive into a little bit more detail with, uh, with further research. But that's also very interesting, I think, when it comes to evidence of identity. Um, social cohesion is also um, about social connectedness through trust in institutions. Um, and Ariana talked about uh, Fanangatanga before, but essentially that's a, that, is a, that is a social connection network. 95% of people shared collections. 60% of those uh, collections that were shared were then shared again. 25% of people received their, their collections from friends. You know, so there's like this, this network, this kind of ecosystem um, that digitization is supporting. I thought this was a really strong connection, uh, digitization of te reo Māori to um, social cohesion. I think um, given world events recently, it's quite um, noticeable what happens when social cohesion starts to fall apart. So I think we have quite a strong sort of um, argument we can make in terms of our contribution to that. And also the, uh, the Treaty of Waitangi settlement process, obviously a significant part of citizen state interaction and or Māori state interaction in the last, um, or since, since the Act in 1975, 75, yeah. 22% uh, experienced an outcome of uh, contribution to a Treaty of Waitangi settlement process. I think that's really huge. From our sector, the archives are being used by 22% of users to contribute to that settlement process. So what can we do about um, all of this? I think, um, I think we need to extend our thinking and actions beyond access that I talked about. We need to promote a better understanding of impact assessment. And what we have done is just scratch the surface 
really. Um, but what we can do using the uh, research that we have done and some of the findings is um, improve um, our messages and our own narrative about what we do in terms of digitization. So um, I want you all collectively to start tweeting and uh, expounding to um, your own funders and the people within your own institutions that research shows that digitization delivers to key government outcomes for New Zealand. And that research from VUW shows evidence of a multiplier effect of the use of digitized collections of Te Reo Māori. The multiplier effect is that use and then use again and then use again. Um, improve our narrative, that's, that's what we're really trying to get across here. Um, next steps, um, we are going to be doing more promotion and communication. Um, if you want us to come and talk to your institution specifically about in more detail about the findings, we ask people, um, for example, what they would like to see digitised. Um, we've got uh, data about which collections were more used or least used. If, uh, we've got data about barriers for access and use. So if you want us to uh, come and talk to you about some of that in more detail, then please get in touch. Uh, we're planning a hui in uh, February 2017 with interested participants to, to test the findings, to receive more narrative, and to plan follow-up research. Um, I think we need to go into a little bit more depth about um, Whanaungatanga, like what, what that means, what that, what that network, what that sharing system and what that social connectedness looks like. Um, we know that, um, and there's a bunch of other questions, like all good research you ask these questions and then you get the results you're like, man I wish we asked this other stuff. <laughs> um, so we are sort of planning what the next phase would look like. If you're interested in being involved in that in some way then please get in touch. Uh, the report is available online. Yes, the report is available online. I'll be tweeting it out because I haven't got a link here for some stupid reason. Um, we do know that there are comparative and complementary international studies. Um, so the University of British Columbia is going to be um, running a comparative um, study around digitization relating to a First Nations tribe up and around um, the Vancouver area. So that'll be interesting to sort of compare and contrast findings there. Um, Ricky, who's in the audience, um, uh, Ricky's from the University of North Ma uh, Maryland. Um, Ricky's also uh, received some funding to um, to uh, to run research around um, understanding impacts and use of uh, of digitized indigenous language um, archival collections. So uh, Ricky's new to New Zealand. So put your hand up, Ricky. Yeah. So <laughs> uh, go and say hi to him. Um, uh, in the afternoon and tomorrow as well. Um, and Interpari is, is uh, one of the funders this, this this research program out of the University of British Columbia. And we're, we've got an international um, archival research symp symposium here in Wellington on December the 9th. Um, if you're interested in, in attending that as well, it's real cheap and we've got people coming from all over the world. Um, uh, it'll be at Victoria University of Wellington um, sort of get in touch with me and, and keep it a lookout for the lists as well. Um, we really placed a lot of uh, importance on um, receiving narrative in, in, the, in the research, so that hasn't really come across that strongly in, in, in what we've been presenting today, but I just wanted to take some time to let some of the voices speak to you. I don't know about you, but that really strikes to the core of, of why I do what I do. Um, yeah, so um, uh, the survey was anonymous, so we don't know who, <laughs> who provided us this, but I'd love to know, love to know what they were talking about, which collections. Um, but this is what the further work is intended to do, is to tease out more of, of, of this narrative. Um, have we got time for the why? 
Okay. This is a waiata that actually I, I rediscovered through digitisation through the uh, New Zealand Electronic Tech Centre. It was in a, um, a book of waiata that uh, the Governor George Grey had collected and um, probably when I had too much time on my hands I trolled through all of the Ngaitahu <laughs> waiata in, in that collection and I discovered um, this version of, of this uh, waiata which was it's a lament um, about surviving um, a, a tribal um, battle or raid on Ōnawe Peninsula, around Banks Peninsula, uh, where my great-great-great-grandmother survived. Um, she was another survivor, and this is a, um, a version of the waiata that I've composed and recently have recorded for a waiata album uh, that we'll be sharing um, with our whānau. So. This is um, Dene Poriki Ona, where's the title of that? Dene Poriki Ona, where Fakari Naka, Titiro Maya Mataki, and the Hoto Rene, Unara Wate Kono Hike Pihautangoya. Kamate aogi tagu tangata. Kia ora. Do we have any time for questions or? That's our time. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for the presentation. Um, my my question is, um, you know. <coughs> Um, I'm still jet lagged and recovering from the trip. Uh, I, I I flew in from Washington D.C., so as you can see, it's a far flight. But um, so uh, impact could be uh, also negative. So sometimes you know you, we we like to look at the positive impact, but there are sometimes negative impacts, unintended consequences. Uh, sometimes it's uh, the impact could be short term or long term. Uh, so I, I wonder if you know you'd consider um, you know other forms of impacts and other uh, time range that uh, in your study. I guess, yeah, for one, um, in terms of traditional um, forms of knowledge transmission, um, it might circumvent you know those traditional relationships if if everybody can just go online and, and receive the information in that way. And I think that is a, a fear um, that those that the relationships might not be just enhance but it might also break down some of that um, but yeah in terms of um, outcomes long term it might actually encourage those people once they have some um, access to some of these treasures that they might um, find new ways of going back to where they're from and reconnecting in that way um, so yeah that's a, a possible negative and positive yeah, we, um, we didn't ask specific questions about that, but we received some narrative that gave us an indication that the traditional knowledge transfer mechanisms were being circumvented. So um, we kind of, we couldn't really sort of make any claim in the, in, the, in the report about that, but we know now that we sort of, in some of the additional phases, we, 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 need, to, we need to sort of find out what that's about. We need to do more research. And we might not have the skills to do that. We may need people with, um, with sort of more sociological or sort of backgrounds to contribute to the research to, to, to find out more there. We also asked some questions about the relationship between institution and user, like the extent to which that's been a positive or negative experience. And to be honest, I don't think our questions were that good. So we didn't quite get the, we didn't, because we were looking at a positive and or negative, we were looking for something there, but um, we didn't quite, get the, the uh, results back to enable us to make a claim either way. So, um, yeah, so maybe again for some follow-up research. Uh, Brian. Uh, I, I just wonder if anyone here's done any, recently done any digitization where they had consultation with people about the digitization of the mobile phone and if there any practical um, Things have gotten easier in terms of consultation agreements around uh, around digitisation. Um, really, there's um, any impact on, on digitisation. So now, in the past, we've hesitated about digitising uh, some modern materials because we knew we were uncertain about the consultation process and 
amount of time energy needed to do that. So what we found, we asked some of those questions in the research and we kind of found a, a sort of an even split of, um, of uh, respondents who thought that um, the, the more that was just put out there, the better, and, and those that were more conservative or thought that institutions should be more conservative. So it's probably not that surprising a result that there's, there's, there's some tension there about the appropriate um, response. So, so we asked, for example, um, which kinds of collections should be digitized and available. And the Māori Land Court Minute Books came up as sort of really high demand. And then we asked which ones shouldn't be digitized and made available. And the Māori Land Court Minute Books <laughs> came up really strong there as well. So, so we wanted to just test whether that tension existed. And so I think it does. That was the finding. The tension exists. And um, uh, the, the, the findings of the research were more on make it open and available, but our, our population was biased towards people who would prefer that anyway. Um, so that's not surpri as surprising a finding, but I think it's still a valuable finding in itself. <laughs>